What is going on guys, Deepak Chopra here, coming back at you with another video, and today, we got another NFL Draft do-over for you guys. This is going to be the 2012 NFL Redraft. Basically, what happens if this is your first redraft for me, I go over the past draft class, and based on the roster at the time, and based on what we know about the players right now, we're going to go ahead and redraft. So, to answer a few questions that you guys might have, or might get along the course of the video, basically... Players drafted from teams can be redrafted. Players, let's say for example, the Broncos, who don't have a first round pick in this draft, take, let's just say for the sake of argument, we'll call them player A. Say the Broncos take player A in the fourth round and they take player B at that spot that they picked already in the first. And player A is so much better than player B. And if he would be off the board at the time they next picked in let's say the second round or the third for the sake of argument, player A can be drafted in the first round. He is not on the team. We're taking it from scratch, going through the draft, and we just happen to only show the first round. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get, in, get into this. Oh, the, whoops, is that my Twitter? Just hitting 3,000 followers? Whoa, link in the description. Maybe you should follow that. Crazy. <laughs> Twitter.com slash Bengal Designs, whoa. So with the first pick, in the draft, the Indianapolis Colts would select Andrew Luck, quarterback out of Stanford. I say that word? Out of Stanford, clearly. Stanford Cardinal. And in the first pick of this 2012 NFL redraft, the Indianapolis Colts select Andrew Luck, quarterback out of Stanford. Now, this was a kind of a toss up selection, as you'll see who goes next. But I think based on the development and the quality of talent that Andrew Luck possesses, even with his injuries that he's had over the past couple of years, I think based on his age, based on the Colts' willingness to pay him a huge, huge um, new renewal for his contract as they re-signed him, uh, I think a couple of years ago, Andrew Luck is clearly the pick here. He's a top five quarterback when healthy, and even though he hasn't been healthy now, I think the Colts would do it all over again. This is a franchise quarterback. Colts are going to stick with the same pick. With the second overall pick in the draft, the Redskins would select RG3, quarterback out of Baylor. Now, we all know about RG Knee. He hasn't exactly been the most talented for the Redskins, as in that playoff game, his knee just went poof, gone forever. <laughs> Aaron Hernandez, whatever. He's not the pick, would later go on to the Browns. We're going to change things up here. So, with this pick in the 2012 NFL draft duo over the Washington Redskins select Russell Wilson quarterback out of Wisconsin also NC State prior to Wisco very very close I think that based on the Colts previously selecting Andrew Luck and Andrew Luck already being their quarterback I think I decided to stick with Andrew Luck on the Colts although Russell Wilson easily could have slid up to that number one spot I think he makes more sense here also, this is ideally what the Redskins would have wanted when they selected a mobile quarterback at a Baylor and RG3. They got Russell Wilson, who has the mobility, the playmaking um, ability. Really tremendous quarterback for the Seahawks. Underrated. Top five in the league, I think, for sure. With the third pick in the 2012 NFL Draft, the Cleveland Browns would select Trent Richardson. One-third of the three blind mice, a group that Trent Richardson is almost a founder of. Blind, blind as a bat, Trent Richardson. However, he doesn't have the ability of echolocation the way bats do, so they actually know where they're going. Trent Richardson just runs into his offensive lineman, ignores holes. Terrible. Browns are going a different move. With the third pick in the 2012 NFL redraft, the Cleveland Browns select Kirk Cousins, quarterback, Michigan State. This was an interesting pick for me. I think based on the need of the Browns at the time, you had to take your quarterback the future and... I haven't always been so high on Kirk Cousins, but I think he is one of the better quarterbacks in the NFL. Um, definitely within the better half. I don't know that he's a top 10 quarterback. I'm not sure that I'd have him there. But I think an actual QB that can, you know, actually be on the Browns team, play at an above average job, would be exactly what the Browns need. Running back, clearly not the fit, especially not one of Trent Richardson's caliber. caliber. They take the best quarterback available, and that happens to be Kirk Cousins. 
With the fourth pick, the Minnesota Vikings would select Matt Khalil. Tackle out of USC. He's made a Pro Bowl, but it's no secret that Matt Khalil hasn't exactly been a phenomenal tackle that the Vikings wanted him to be. He would eventually go up to Carolina, or down to Carolina, clearly, uh, as he's on the Panthers now. He isn't the move, gotta tell you. He's just not. But maybe Luke Keekley is. Arguably could have been the third overall pick, but I think the Browns would value a quarterback more than a linebacker. Luke Keekley, arguably the best linebacker in the league. Bobby Wagner is coming after that title with a vengeance this year in the NFL. But Luke Keekley, when healthy, is obviously a top five, top three, top two linebacker in the NFL. Been so talented for, uh, for the Panthers coming out of BC. When healthy, dominant inside linebacker. Luke Keekley is the pick here to replace Aaron Henderson, or, you know, he's probably the best linebacker that they had on the inside uh, during those times. Luke Keekley, easily the pick here for the Vikings at number four. With the fifth pick in the draft, the Jacksonville Jaguars would go Justin Blackman, receiver out of Oklahoma State, and Blackman came onto the scene and was really, really good, but just like Josh Gordon, a lot of trouble staying on the field. I think he was suspended indefinitely by the Jags and has not played a snap since probably his rookie season, which, not ideal. Ton of potential. He's He can't be the pick, though, obviously. So, with the fifth pick in the 2012 NFL redraft, the Jacksonville Jaguars select Alshon Jeffrey, receiver out of South Carolina. Tremendously big target. He is way better than Justin Blackman is, obviously as he actually plays, and he has been injured in the past, but he's been great for the Eagles. He was fantastic for the Bears coming onto the scene. Absolutely just blew up for the Bears at one season, apart uh, from Brandon Marshall. Really awesome player, and the Jags get exactly what they want in a big, dominant receiving threat that they thought they probably had in Justin Blackman. With the sixth pick, the Dallas Cowboys would go Mo Claiborne, cornerback out of LSU. Dominant cornerback at LSU. He was so sick there. And then, of course, complete NFL bust. He has had one good season in his career, and that was last year. And then he signed a pretty big deal to go to the Jets. Morris Claiborne is an absolute bust, whatever you want to say. He was a sixth, a top six draft pick and played like a fifth or sixth round pick that started year in and year out. For that reason, this pick is changing, and it's changing too. Harrison Smith, safety out of Notre Dame. One of the top safeties in the NFL. Harrison Smith is so fun to play, whether he's playing up in the box, playing over the top. He's got good speed, fantastic range, good ball skills. He's exactly what you'd want a safety to be. Tremendous player. Cowboys fortify their secondary and go with an amazing safety. With the seventh pick, the Buccaneers would go Mark Barron, a safety out of Alabama. And now he obviously didn't work out as a safety for the Buccaneers. And this is actually kind of cool because in some of these drafts, and I think especially last one, or maybe it was 2014 or 2015, I, I don't recall, but almost all the picks stayed the exact same for the first like first nine picks. And this is clearly quite different as Mark Barron is not going to be the pick here for the Buccaneers. It was a bust for them as well. Top 10 pick that just didn't pan out. They didn't know how to play him, but he's been a great linebacker for the Rams. Clearly couldn't play safety, but at money backer in one of those roles, he's been awesome. Can't be the pick here for the Buccaneers. They're going to go ahead and select Levante David, outside linebacker out of Nebraska, and clearly the Bucs would get him later. But if the Bucs were not to select Levante David here at this number seven spot, he would not be on the board much longer. They wouldn't be able to get him later. So obviously, if they want Levante David, which clearly they do, he's another really good player in the league. They have to take him here. They can't get him later. He isn't automatically on the team the way some of you think that would work for some reason. I'm not sure why that is. Clearly, they have to take Levante David, and they do. Tremendous, tremendous player out of Nebraska. Only 27 years old, and already, I guess like Luke Keekley, one of the best linebackers in the NFL. With the eighth pick, the Miami Dolphins would go Ryan Tannehill, receiver turned quarterback out of Texas A&M. And he actually worked his way up to a first round draft pick. Fantastic for Ryan Tannehill, but he's never really been more than just okay at the NFL level. So for that reason, we're going to change this pick and have the Dolphins take, yes, Olivier Vernon. He was the pick later, I think in the second round for the Dolphins out of Miami. Clearly, they don't have him anymore as he's a New York Giant. 
but if they were able to retain Olivier Vernon to what he is now, I think they're going to take him again. He's a top 4-3 defensive end in the NFL. He's been playing injured the entire year, so the numbers aren't even close to there. But when healthy, he is phenomenal, can shut down the run at one of the highest levels in the NFL, stays on the field the entire game. Like He played like 93% of snaps last year, something ridiculous. Can get after the quarterback. Such a good defensive weapon. Obviously, he doesn't play offense. Such a good weapon, though. Um, you know, whether he's setting the edge, getting after the quarterback, stopping the run, whatever it is, OV is absolutely dominant. Phenomenal when healthy. Dolphins are going to take him again. This time, they're going to have to take a top 10 pick to get him. With the ninth pick, the Carolina Panthers would go Luke Keekley, linebacker out of BC. He's clearly no longer on the board. He went at number four to the Minnesota Vikings. And with this pick, they're going to go ahead and take B-Wags 54, Bobby Wagner out of Utah State. Obviously, was uh, drafted by the Seahawks, I think, in the second round. And um, he has played like one of the best linebackers in the NFL, probably the best. Defensive player of the year candidate for sure. He's absolutely incredible. And you could argue that he could be at any one of these picks. But I think it makes a lot of sense for the teams to take who they already took based on scheme fit and a number of other variables. So Bobby Wagner somehow does fall all the way down to number nine with the Panthers, and I know that's kinda like fall all the way down to nine, that's still a top 10 pick. Very talented draft class. Bobby Wagner goes at number nine in the Panthers. They get basically Luke Keekley, but a little bit faster, a little bit better maybe, it's hard to say. Bobby Wagner's definitely been better this season. Luke Keekley's been better historically. It's very close, could go either way. Let me know what you think down in the comments section below, by the way. Is Bobby Wagner better than Luke Keekley because he's having a better season? Or would you prefer Luke Keekley, who's just been so good over the last couple of years for the Panthers, despite, again, injury concerns? But regardless, we're moving on. The Buffalo Bills would select Stefan Gilmore, cornerback out of South Carolina. He was really good for the Bills. Now, of course, on the Patriots. Well, he was, he was good on the Bills. He's made a Pro Bowl, um, although that's not exactly saying much. With this pick, the Bills are going to take Josh Norman, cornerback out of Coastal Carolina. Basically, what this move is, is you draft a cornerback in Stefan Gilmore, you draft a better one now in Josh Norman. Clearly better than Stefan Gilmore. I don't think anyone would argue that. Josh Norman on his best day, he's a top cornerback in the NFL. He has been in the past, still pretty good now for the Washington Redskins. Bills get him, they snag him at number 10 to round out our top 10. With the 11th pick, another Pro Bowler. As you guys can see, the names highlighted in yellow with the crosses are Pro Bowl players. And there are a number of good players that have not made Pro Bowls that are talented. You see Bruce Irvin down the board at 15 to the Seahawks. But the Chiefs go Dontari Poe. He's no longer on the team. They couldn't sign him. He went to uh, the Falcons on a one-year deal. And with this pick, they could take the same player. I'm not really sure who I have. It's been like maybe a month and a half since I actually made this list. So... We're going to see who, this, who the Chiefs take now at number 11. Yeah, this makes sense. Fletcher Cox, defensive tackle out of Mississippi State, went healthy. One of the top interior defensive linemen in the NFL. He's been so, so good, so dominant. Very young as well. Been so good for the Philadelphia Eagles. Chiefs took a nose tackle. They're going to take not exactly a nose, but still an interior defensive lineman and definitely a better one. I don't think anyone would argue that Dontari Poe really in any role is better than Fletcher Cox. He's just so good. Chiefs get themselves an absolute stud here. As you guys can see, this is an absolutely loaded draft class as Fletcher Cox is not even a top 10 pick. With the 12th pick in the 2012 NFL draft, the Philadelphia Eagles would go Fletcher Cox, who's no longer available. Clearly he was just drafted one pick before to the Kansas City Chiefs. Can I say that oddly? Perhaps. However, with this pick instead, in this redraft, the Philadelphia Eagles select Zach Brown, middle linebacker out of UNC. He's been so good recently, one of the most underrated players in the NFL. Um, he was awesome for the Bills. He was really good. Well, he was okay for the Titans. That's where I think he was before the Bills. Um, and then he's been really good on the Redskins. This guy, so underrated. So good. Eagles get themselves an extremely athletic, rangy middle linebacker to fill that gap in their defense. At 13, the Arizona Cardinals would go Michael Floyd, receiver out of Notre Dame. If you don't know, Michael Floyd was awesome for the Cardinals. He has a little problem with a little bit of drinking, a little bit of driving, not great. 
<laughs> with this pick, the Cardinals instead will select T.Y. Hilton, receiver out of Florida International, talented receiver, very different type of receiver to a Michael Floyd. I think he would pair awesomely with Larry Fitzgerald of 2012. You get the athletic, huge six foot three target in Larry Fitzgerald. You bring in the slot receiver to absolutely tear up defenses. This is what um, the Cardinals wanted when they took John Brown in 2014, I recall. T.Y. Hilton would be an awesome fit for this offense. Tremendous pair with Larry Fitzgerald. They get themselves a sick wide receiver. At number 14, you'd see the Rams go. Michael Brockers, nose tackle out of LSU. He's been a talented player in the NFL. I won't spoil as to whether we keep the same pick. We're just going to jump right into it. With this pick, the 14th in the NFL draft do-over of 2012, the St. Louis at the time, Rams would select Tremaine Johnson, cornerback out of Montana. He's having a breakout year. He's been tremendous, tremendous for the Rams. I know they got him later. If they want him, they're going to have to take him. He fits exactly what the Rams want to do in their new scheme. He's been so good, so talented. Rams are going to take him here at number 14 because he would probably go within these next couple of picks anyway um, if they didn't take him. With the 15th pick, you'd see the Seattle Seahawks go a hybrid linebacker in Bruce Irvin. And with this pick in the 2012 NFL redraft, the Seattle Seahawks select Melvin Ingram, a stud pass rusher out of South Carolina. He's been so good for the Chargers this year. Absolute tremendous pairing with Joey Bosa. They're an unstoppable force. They really are. The best probably pass rushing duo in the NFL out there in LA. Really, really good. Seahawks now get themselves such a talented pass rusher. Obviously with Cliff Averill having some question marks now. And Frank Clark is good. He definitely is. But really, this is your Cliff Averill replacement. Melvin Ingram, top pass rusher in the NFL. He falls all the way to 18. No, that's where he was taken already by the Chargers. He falls all the way to 15. And you could argue that he could go above Olivier Vernon. I just took scheme fit uh, into account. I think he probably fits better. Melvin Ingram with the Seahawks would be so, so disgusting with their defense already in place. With the 16th pick, you'd see the Jets go Quinton Copels out of UNC. You could say he's a bust. He's never really been better than an okay player in the NFL, which is unfortunate, but it's a fact. It's a fact in the matter. With this pick in the redraft, the New York Jets are going to select Janoris Jenkins, cornerback out of North Alabama and also kind of Florida. He's been so good for the Giants. Not so much this year necessarily, but last year he was awesome. The year before that, he was really good. Um, you know, started out a little bit shaky to his career, getting burnt a lot with the Rams, but he's been so good for the Giants. Pro Bowl cornerback, so good. Jets get themselves a way better cornerback than anyone they had at the roster on this time. Well, okay, 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 okay. Darrell Revis, I'm aware. I think this was the year he tore his ACL and then he went to the Bucks. So, question marks there. Jamaris Jenkins would be a sick pairing either way. With the 17th pick in the draft, the Cincinnati Bengals would go Dre Kirkpatrick, another just pretty awful cornerback <laughs> that the Bengals have taken in the past like decade. It's been so bad. Their draft record is horrific. I think the last good cornerback they may have drafted, it, well, aside from William Jackson, who I think has great potential, it might have been they draft Leon Hall. I think they did. He was pretty good. Um, I think that's pretty much the last one. He's like 33 now or something ridiculous. Um, we're not going to have the Bengals take Drake Kirkpatrick again. I'm not going to subject Drake Kirkpatrick to getting stiff-armed into oblivion by Le'Veon Bell in the AFC North. They're going to take Vontez Burfitt, outside linebacker at Arizona State. He's been really good for the Bengals. Top outside linebacker in the league, whether people want to admit it or not. Very polarizing player. A lot of people really hate this guy. And... Based on the fact that he is so polarizing, he hits a lot of people illegally. These are just the facts. It is what it is. Still a good player. Bengals obviously like him. He fits their scheme really well. They're going to have to take him at this point if they still want him. And clearly, we're going to say that they do. With the 18th pick in the 2012 NFL Draft, the San Diego Chargers would select Melvin Ingram, pass rusher, edge rusher, out of South Carolina. He is no longer on the board. He went a little bit earlier. Uh, to the Seattle Seahawks at pick number 15. Instead, the Chargers are going to select another edge rusher in Chandler Jones out of Syracuse. Was so good for the Patriots, then was kind of meh 
and then has been great for the Cardinals over the past couple of years. Really good player, fits well with the Chargers scheme, basically a straight replacement for Melvin Ingram. With the 19th pick, the Chicago Bears would take Shane McClellan, pass rusher slash inside linebacker slash outside linebacker. He's done it all between the Bears and the Patriots and not really at all at a high level, unfortunately, for the Bears. Um, of course, it's Boise State. Bears are going to mix it up here, and instead they're going to select Whitney Merciless, another edge rusher. This class is just absolutely loaded with them out of Illinois. Another just sick, sick player, and he falls all the way to number 19 with the Bears. Basically a replacement for what they wanted Shea McClellan to be. Whitney Merciless has obviously done it at a way higher level for the Texans when healthy. He's been injured this year. You can't rescind, or you can't take away from what he's done on the field. Rescind. It makes no sense. But we're going to move on now to the last pick of the top 20, and that is going to be with the Tennessee Titans. So the Tennessee Titans would take Kendall Wright, a receiver out of Baylor, and Kendall Wright has not been that dude for the Titans. He's actually on the Bears now, but we're not going to subject the Bears to taking Kendall Wright at number 19 when there's so many better players on the board. Instead of just the weird average to below average receiver that Kendall Wright has been in the NFL, we're going to go ahead and give the Titans Damon Harrison, defensive tackle out of William Penn, the best nose tackle in the NFL, and it's not even close. It really isn't. Um, Aaron Donald isn't a nose tackle, if you're going to say it in the comments. He's not. Damon Harrison, by far the best nose tackle in the NFL. Such a good run stuffer. So, so good. And he falls all the way to 20, luckily for the Tennessee Titans. They get themselves a sick, sick player. Um, not exactly happy about this, as I am a Giants fan. But it is what it is. Giants don't pick way later at pick number 32, as they were Super Bowl champions. The Super Bowl prior to this draft. But yeah, Damon Harrison, Titans at number 20. Next up would be the New England Patriots who selected Chandler Jones. Obviously, we talked about Chandler Jones. I think he went to the Chargers, if I recall, at number 18, just a few picks ago. Patriots don't have a choice. They're going to have to change their selection, and they're going to change that selection too. Dante Hightower, linebacker out of Alabama. I know this seems weird. Dante Hightower went a little bit later to the Patriots at 25. We're going to operate under the assumption that Dante Hightower would have been selected by another team as he's a really, really great player, underrated for sure in the NFL. And if the Patriots want him, they're not taking any chances. They want him back on their team, obviously. He's such a, such a good player. Patriots have to take him at 21. And we're going to move on to the Browns now at 22. So in classic Browns fashion, um, they thought that taking a 27-year-old quarterback in the first round in Brandon Whedon out of Oklahoma State was a good idea. Uh, spoiler alert, it's not. Terrible idea. We saw them take Kirk Cousins at number three. And now, at 22, they took a quarterback. Quarterback's already off the board for them. They're not going to take two quarterbacks, clearly. Not going to stick with Brandon Whedon. Instead, they're going to go ahead and draft Mitchell Schwartz, tackle out of Cal. Obviously, he's been a guy that's been on the Browns before. I think he makes sense to go back to the Browns, helping out with that offensive line. They get themselves a top quality tackle here in the draft. I think it's worth it um, at the 22nd pick. You got to protect your new QB in Kirk Cousins. At number 23, the Detroit Lions would go Riley Reef. He's no longer on the team, and there have been other you know tackles that they've drafted that have just been so much better, like Taylor Decker. Yeah, I guess he's probably the only one, but Riley Reef has been average. There are better players in the draft. Detroit Lions are not going to go back to Riley Reef. Instead, they're going to go ahead and draft Casey Hayward, cornerback out of Vanderbilt. Statistically, he's been probably the best cornerback in the NFL this year, and it's not even particularly close. I mean, it kind of is, but Casey Hayward has just been dominant. He's been the force that has driven this Chargers defense to be as good as it's been, and he's just playing, getting everyone around him to play so well. Detroit Lions need a cornerback. They don't have any talented cornerbacks on the roster at this point. Casey Hayward clearly can be that dude. They're going to take him here as he falls all the way to 23. This draft class is just loaded. At number 24, the Pittsburgh Steelers would go David DeCastro, um, a guard out of Stanford. And sorry to spoil this, but we're just going to do it. David DeCastro is like arguably the best guard in the NFL right now. Um, he's been playing better than Zach Martin. The pick here is pretty clear for me. We're sticking with David DeCastro. 
guard out of Stanford. He's just so, so good. He falls all the way to 24. It's just the way it happens sometimes when I'm doing these. I go, I'm trying to do it like best player available per team need. I look at the roster and I'm like, I look at the ages and I'm like, hmm, was this a liability for them at the time? Was he really that good of a player? Um, depending on who they would be replacing, who they drafted instead. I think David DeCastro being so, so good, it doesn't make a ton of sense for him to fall all the way to 24. But this draft class is loaded, as I keep saying. So he happens to fall to 24. Steelers are just going to keep the same pick. At number 25, the Patriots would select Dante Hightower. Dante Hightower is no longer on the board because Patriots took him a little bit earlier. So the Alabama linebacker is now going to be replaced, even though he still is already on the team. The new pick is changed to Mark Barron. They double up on Alabama linebackers, I know. Kind of odd. In my opinion, with the Patriots defense, they could find a perfect spot to play Mark Barron. Whether that's a hybrid linebacker, whether that's a strong safety, I'm not really sure. I have him listed at middle linebacker here. And of course, they do have Gerard Mayo at this time, who would end up retiring not too soon after this season. I think you get another couple of years out of him. Mark Barron, I think he just works so, so well for what the Patriots want to do. Bill Belichick is going to find a way to utilize Mark Barron to his full abilities, make him an absolute weapon in the defense. I think Mark Barron makes sense for the Patriots. With the 26th pick, the Texans would select Whitney Merciless. Whitney Merciless obviously is no longer on the board. I think he went to the Bears, if I'm not mistaken, at number 19. So with this pick, instead of Whitney Merciless, the Texans are going to draft Calicio Semele guard out of Iowa State, another top guard in the NFL. Texans get their guy. Um, obviously, they would go after Xavier Suafalo, I think in a few drafts after this couple drafts in 2014, if I'm not mistaken. He's a bust. They get their guy here in Calicio Assembly to be a phenomenal guard for them, protect whoever their quarterback happens to be, whether, you know, they are rocking with Matt Schaub or, or you know, whoever, whether it's Deshaun Watson in a few years' time. You need to boost up that offensive line for whoever your quarterback ends up being. Cleach Semley, very good player. I think he makes sense for the Texans here at number 26. At number 27, the Cincinnati Bengals would select Kevin Zeitler, guard out of Wisconsin. Another good guard. What's up with all these good guards here in the draft? We're just going to move to the Bengals. Bengals are going to take Kevin Zeitler, guard out of Wisconsin. He gets brought back, obviously, the Bengals could not re-sign him. He signed a massive deal to go to Cleveland uh, to play for the Browns and that offensive line as they're trying to revamp that. He was a solid player for the Bengals, obviously. Really good offensive lineman for them while he was on the team. Bengals, they're going to do the exact same thing. At number 28, the Green Bay Packers would go Nick Perry. Um, kind of a pass rusher. I'd say more of a hybrid linebacker out of USC. Good player. We're just going to go ahead and, and get to this pick reveal. And the Packers are going to take... Dontari Poe, nose tackle out of Memphis. He's everything they wanted B.J. Raji to be, right? A little bit good. Not the best defensive lineman in the NFL by any means. Not by a long stretch, but he's a solid interior defender. Um, decent at getting after the quarterback. He's an athlete. Also, he's just a huge, huge person to move. So he's great as a nose tackle, taking up blocks and having uh, other players rush in there and get after either the running back or the quarterback, depending on what the blitz is, if they're running any blitz. I'm not going to go over defensive schemes right now. Packers get themselves an excellent nose tackle to help out that defense. At number 29, the Vikings would get an absolute steal and go Harrison Smith, safety out of Notre Dame at this pick in the draft. Obviously, he's no longer on the board, not available to be drafted. He went top six as he went to the Cowboys uh, with that pick. So instead of Harrison Smith, who I'm sure the Vikings would love to have at this point, they can't draft him. They're going to go ahead and take a different safety, and that's going to be to Sean Gibson, safety out of Wyoming. He was good for the Browns, man. I, mean, I think he made a Pro Bowl. He's been pretty solid for the Jaguars. I think he makes sense now for the Vikings. Um, instead of Harrison Smith, they have a need at safety. Deshaun Gibson hopefully fills that need. He's not a Harrison Smith, but he's not bad either. Oh, boy. <laughs> Another Illinois player taken in the first round. Unfortunately for the 49ers, it would not be a very good Illinois player like Whitney Merciless was. It's going to be A.J. Jenkins. Complete draft bust. Such a bad player. Sorry, A.J. Jenkins. You fucking sucked it. It's a classic quote. I don't know if you guys know what video that's from, but classic if you know it. Uh, regardless, A.J. Jenkins, not the pick here for the 49ers. They're going to instead take 
Brandon Brooks to add to this tremendous guard class. I couldn't see Brandon Brooks not going in the first round. Another really, really good offensive lineman. He fits, helps out with uh, Anthony Davis, I think was sick at right tackle for the 49ers at this time. Joe Staley was on the line. They had a pretty good offensive line. Brandon Brooks is going to fill that gap at right guard or potentially play left, whatever they want to do with him. Really good offensive guard. We're going to move on now to 31, where we saw the Tampa Bay Buccaneers select Doug Martin. And now the Doug or not has been solid for the Buccaneers. He's made a Pro Bowl. He also has taken performance enhancing drugs. No can do, Doug. We're going to start calling you the muscle hamster because I know you hate it. With this pick, the Buccaneers are going to go ahead and take... They're sticking with the muscle hamster, a.k.a. Doug or not, a.k.a. Doug Martin, running back out of Boise State. He goes at the exact same spot. I think it's a good range for him. Good running back. He's been solid. That's really all I can say. And now to wrap things up, we have my favorite team, the New York Giants, picking at 32, where they would take David Wilson, a running back, out of Virginia Tech. And now David Wilson was a really fun player to watch because he was just a playmaker. I don't think he was worth a first-round pick. I don't think he ever should have been the pick. I think you can say he's a bust. He was electric on kick returns, but he was never going to be that bell cow running back that you need, and that would be worth a first-round pick. Very sorry to hear what happened to him with the whole neck. He had to retire. Um, but yeah, David Wilson, needless to say, is not the pick here. Instead, the Giants are going to go ahead and draft Malik Jackson, a defensive tackle out of Tennessee. He helps out with that defensive line, get it back to where it used to be. You know, of course, they've had tremendous pass rushes on the outside. Justin Tuck, Matthias Kiwanuka for a couple of years. Obviously, OCU Manura. Jason Pierre-Paul would be on the team um, at this time. You need more help on the interior. What do you have at this time? Chris Canty, who was the last good one. Barry Cofield. Malik Jackson makes a lot of sense here for the Giants. Help out. Tremendous defensive line in the works there. Again, Malik Jackson is a pick. But I hope you guys enjoyed let me know what you think down in the comment section below. I know there's always going to be disagreements. It's the nature of the beast. It's just the way I think it would have went. But thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next one. Take it easy.